Where is hey, how, how you doing? Where are you from Remember, tonight? Nurses, we we have an amazing, amazing content for you right here surface. every Wednesday. We, always we do them Winning Wednesday. And tonight's and subject will be Otitis Media. Now, Otitis Media is something that we have talked about, heard about, experienced, especially if you have kids. So we're going to go oh, a little into a little review. Ear also, you when don't you need to prepare to for this class. I'm gonna, we're going to start over from the, the basics of it. Of it well, Titus Media is in your penna. quick facts book. And so the penna if you know what page it is, is the part of the get into ear it. On the Speaking of Titus Media, you get into so the V2 the the ear for the, the rest of your content. Okay, um, so it's you guys know I've been on a drawing of, kick lately, and this is how, can y'all hear me? Well, facilitate this is how we goes. prepare so ourselves to be introduced. Ah, child. there's two voices for going on. For the adult, on. Thank you. you hold the penna up and... How about that now? Remar Nurses holding us down. Thank you so much. Okay, let me do the introduction again. Otitis Media tonight, okay? Otitis Media... You can find it in your Quick Facts book. However, we're going to go over it as if maybe you have never read it before. Thank you so much, you guys. You, you know you make these live broadcasts even better with the instant feedback. So we're going to go over Otitis Media, an, an anatomy of it, okay? It's on page 64. It's on page 64 of your book. Hi, everybody. Hi, my first time viewers. I have some people that were listening to me on TikTok and then they came here and now they, they, they're they here with me, rocking with me tonight. And shout out to everybody that took advantage of the Labor Day sale. I have uh, a lot of new nursing students who are now part of the Remar family. So Otitis Media, let's talk about it. Are y'all ready? Okay, future nurse from Ohio. Okay, Otitis Media, let's just get our anatomy going and comments on the screen when we talk about otitis media what's another name for this if we were talking about a location for this type of condition what part of the ear are we talking about heavy on the this part <laughs> i am new on the live hey it's glad to have you um we are glad to have you i should say here we do this every wednesday at 9 p.m. So I see it uh, here, the high, the middle, the middle, okay? So whenever we have a otitis, right? So we know we have some uh, inflammation going, all right? Oto, ear, otitis, ear. What part of the ear? Is it the external ear? No, it is the middle part of the ear. So we're doing the work of content right now by just making sure we understand this condition. And you learn a lot just from the name of something. If you know the name of the condition, you're halfway there. So now let's go into these questions here. Are we gonna see this inflammation behind the eardrum or in front of the eardrum? Very important. No, there's no Kahoot tonight. It's just regular, regular old down and dirty content. That's it. Okay. Did y'all think I was doing Kahoot tonight for some reason? Did I say I was? Okay. So we said the, the eardrum. Is it going to be behind the eardrum or in front of the eardrum? A lot of people are saying this, and you guys are right. It's going to be behind the eardrum. Because when the doctor looks at the, the child's ear or the adult's ear, they're gonna see a bulging eardrum. So that infection, that fluid is gonna be behind it, okay? Behind it, yes, you station tube, so behind it. Who are we gonna see otitis media, middle ear infection most common in? Kids or adults? Which one? Which one are we going with, kids or adults? What do you say? Bridget says kids. Anybody else agree with Bridget tonight? So many people. Okay, so we had that. Good job. Kids are going to be more likely to have otitis media. Now, the, the pain of otitis media, are the kids more likely going to report, can't say complain anymore, in nursing, you got to say report. Are the kids going to report the pain more in the day or in the night? 
in the day or in the night. And this is just warming you guys up, the brain up. I'm trying to take you back to nursing lecture. Oh, I'm seeing some days and I'm seeing some nights. Have you never been asked this before? This is good. Correct answer. The nighttime. The nighttime. Because remember, at night, you're laying down. And so you're going to have more pressure in your brain and your ears. It's going to be the nighttime. Okay. That's right. That's right. This is uh, the largest NCLEX review on the planet right now. 600 nurses are studying otitis media here with Remar. Okay, last question. What is more common? What is the most, what is the more common offender? Is it bacteria or is it virus? What do you guys say? I love it. I feel like y'all already know this stuff. I'm going to go over it anyways. Okay. And the correct answer is, bam, bacterial, bacterial. So we are ready now that we have been prepped. We are ready to talk about otitis media. So when we're talking about otitis media, this is what you guys said. It is a middle ear infection that results in inflammation and fluid buildup behind the ear drum. So it's behind the ear drum, not in frente day. In frente day. That's my Spanish for today. All right. And so um, it's the second most common pediatric diagnosis in the emergency room after respiratory infections. So how common is this? Oh my goodness. How common is this? Very, very common. slide, I should say. There are three types of otitis media, otitis media with effusion. So o acute otitis media, we have the term acute there. And so that is just a middle ear infection that comes on very what? Quickly. It comes on very, very quickly. And you're going to have swelling and redness. Okay. Chronic superative otitis media. This is is when you have the initial infection clearing up, but you still have fluid and mucus buildup in the middle ear. So it's a chronic condition. And then otitis media with effusion or OMI, or OMI, this is where fluid may persist in the middle ear for an extended period or return even without infection, even without infection. So um, this also can be a condition that otitis media can bring about. Why are children more prone to ear infections than adults? The reason is because children are more likely than adults to suffer ear infections because number one, right? The child's eustachian tubes, they don't function like adults. So it is very easy for fluid to accumulate behind the eardrum. We know that the eustachian tube is shorter in children than adults. Also, their immune system. If we talk about viral or bacterial types of otitis media, the child's defense system is still developing. Mm -hmm. And the other children that they are around. Children tend to be carriers of germs. And so one of the predisposing factors to children getting reoccurrent otitis media is because they are around other kids. Okay. But I am one to definitely say that that's not always the case because my son doesn't go to daycare. He's homeschooled. And this boy has uh, <laughs> otitis media at least every two months constantly. I want to shout out this Lorette, hi. She says, thank you all very, very much. I'm a Remar nurse, pass RN. Okay, RN also stands for Remar nurse. Um, 
August the 30th. Thank you very much. May the Lord bless us all. May the Lord bless us all. Thank you so much for that blessing upon us. Okay. Uh, that blessing upon us. Thank you so much. So we're talking about otitis media and I'm testifying that I have a child that has otitis media very frequently. So this subject is near and dear to my heart. Now, the causes of otitis media are going to be bacterial and viruses. They can cause infections and they're frequently a result of cold or another upper respiratory infection microorganisms enter the middle ear via the eustachian tube. Okay. We know it's shorter. So the, the virus or the bacteria may cause that eustachian tube to swell once entered. Cold or allergy. Otitis media can also cause swelling or congestion in the, the nasal lining, the throat, and the eustachian tube. And so this inflammation is going to further block normal blood flow. And then Maybe the child is even born with a eustachian tube deformity, and this can develop when the mucosal lining of the tube becomes inflamed, and so it doesn't close or open normally. Symptoms. What are our symptoms of otitis media? Some of these you may know, some of these you may not know, but when we're talking about children and adults, you're going to have some similar symptoms. Irritability. Okay. Difficulty falling or staying asleep, fever, fluid draining from the ears. Okay. This could indicate a ruptured eardrum, right? Loss of balance, hearing problems, having a fullness or a pressure in the ears, ear pain, nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Hey, Jenny, I got your message right here. Thank you so much. Hi, hey, Remar. I took my NCLEX RN yesterday and I passed. Thank you, Team Remar. What'd you do, the quick results? I'm officially a Remar nurse. God bless you. Let us know, let us know how, how many questions did you have? Was it more difficult than you thought it was gonna be? Was it easier? Um, let me know, okay? You busting in on Winning Wednesday. Also, Sylvia, I passed NCLEX last week. Good night, everyone. <laughs> That's, it. That's it. That's it. Thanks, Regina and family for your help. So I appreciate on behalf of the family, I say thank you. Thank you for letting us know that you passed. I love that. <laughs> Man. So there are many causes, many symptoms to otitis media. Okay. Otitis media. And so we're talking about the middle ear infection here. How is otitis media diagnosed? You know, this is one of the things I talk about as far as content goes, the physical exam where the doctor is going to diagnose the ear infection based on the symptoms. So we're going to look for an ear exam and also the symptoms of possibly a cold or upper respiratory tract infection. Ear examination using the otoscope. The physician will examine the outer ear and eardrums. Pay attention because you guys know we have questions after this. The doctor can view the ear with a lighted device called an otoscope. The eardrum might show signs of fluid in the middle ear. Okay, so bulging, a bulging eardrum being a distinctive color. So a red or a yellow Okay, or it may appear cloudy. Okay, what it may appear cloudy. Tympanum, tympanometry. All right, it is a test that determines how the eardrum responds to variations in air pressure. A healthy eardrum can move without difficulty if there is a shift in air pressure. If the eardrum moves gradually or not at all, okay, um, it usually indicates fluid behind it. All right. Audiometry is hearing. It's a hearing test that uses an audiometer to generate sounds of different volumes and frequencies. And so during the exam, the client will be asked if they can hear noises through the headphones. 
what do we give for treatment? This condition, pretty straightforward. The doctor may, the doctor may prescribe acetaminophen or ibuprofen to, okay, to treat pain. Analgesic drops. If the eardrum is not ruptured, if it is no hole or tear in it, then analgesic drops can be given for pain relief. And then also antibiotics. The American Academy of Pediatrics has guidelines on when a child should be given antibiotics and when it is best to observe, um, observe them. This is another um, slide just about the treatment. And what I have here is just looking at the age. So the age ranges from six months to 23 months. So it's about six months to 23 months, right? And you are gonna be looking at the severity of the symptoms and the temperature for that child. And um, I know you might have you might have trouble seeing this, but the whole point is just you're basically uh, the generalization, guys, is that antibiotics are going to be given for bacterial infections. We as nurses don't have to, you know, we don't have to know which antibiotic is best. We just have to know if it's a bacterial otitis media, media they will get antibiotics. The doctor will weigh all of, you know, the pros and cons about the different an antibiotics for the child. So essentially antibiotics for six months to about two years old. All right, let me go back to it. And then if there is two, if they're two, 24 months or two years old or older in one or both ear and they have a fever, then you're going to treat with antibiotics and observe the child's condition, making sure that of course, the symptoms don't get worse, don't get worse. Ear tubes. Ear tubes can be suggested, but only if the child has specific symptoms that the doctor might recommend to treat with the draining of fluid. So ear tubes are, are used to keep fluid out of um, that inner ear canal. And so it will also help with a child who frequently has otitis media. So this is a procedure that is not typically recommended unless the child is having specific, specific symptoms. Now, how do you prevent, how do you prevent otitis media? Well, preventing the common colds and infection is going to be very significant. So you want to wash hands routinely and thoroughly. Do not share eating or drinking utensils. Teach children to sneeze or cough into their elbows, and then also limit the child's playtime or group time in child care, if that's possible. Also avoid secondhand smoke. Check that no one is smoking in the home. Secondhand smoke is actually a predisposer to, child, to a child getting otitis media. And then breastfeeding your child that is supposed to help with the immune system, okay, with the immune system. Hold the baby in an upright position during breastfeeding time. Also, if a baby is drinking from a bottle, don't give them a bottle while laying down. Now, why do we say that? Why does the position of the feeding of the baby matter, okay? Bottles should not be placed in the crib in the baby. If you know that, go ahead and put the comment on the screen. And then maintain current vaccinations ensure that the child's immunizations are current, including their yearly flu shot for children who are six months and older. And when we talk about immunizations, we talk about flu shots. Yes, six months is that time where infants can get the flu shot is six months, okay? All right, here's our questions. You know, we do content first and then we do questions. So here's question number one. Here's question number one. And you, yes, you guys are right. We don't put the baby in the bed with a bottle. And the reason why we don't lay them down while we're feeding them is because that fluid can leak into the ears. It can, it can leak. The fluid can drain into the ears. So, oh my goodness. Um, Really cool testimonial. I might have missed somebody's. Thank you all so much. I took my test two days after my grandma passed away. 
the computer cut off at 103, exactly my grandma's age. God gave me my angel. Wow. What an awesome testimonial. Um, and we're just praying for you, even, you know, in your time of loss and praying that uh, you continue to see, you know, you continue to see favor and, and have success. So that's an amazing testimonial. Thank you so much for coming on here. Um, Sylvia, yeah, I shouted you out. I passed NCLEX last week. Good night, everyone. Thanks, Regina, for your help. Also, um, Lorette, yep, another testimonial. We got tons of testimonials. Over 900 nurses are watching right now, and they are passing. Lorette passed. And I just want to shout out to Anai. Am I saying that right? I'm battling with breast cancer. I'm studying when I can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will pass my NCLEX. Yes. And I just want to say, you know, during this challenging time, we will be praying for you right now. Let's pray. Let's pray. Everybody, let's pray right now for our sister who is in the midst of a trial and she is showing up when she can. Right. She is she is trying to win this winning Wednesday by just being present. And so right now, um, let's, you know, bow our heads, all minds clear, all hearts clear as we lift our sister up. Lord, we thank you right now for your for the opportunity to come to thy throne of grace. We thank you, Lord, because we believe in your power and we know that with God, all things are possible. So we just lift up our sister who is battling breast cancer, Lord. And I ask that if it be your will, Lord, and if, if we have the faith that you would touch your body right now, Lord, and that you would remove the cancer and that you would uh, do it in a way that only you only you can do it, Lord. And we will be careful to give you the praise, the honor and the glory for the victory. You can do all things but fail, Lord. And so we just thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, our righteousness, our redeemer, our savior. We ask these things in Jesus name. Amen. All right, guys. Um, and so this is what we come here for. We come here. We come here to we come here to be an encouragement to somebody. Whenever we feel like, you know, we are, are going through, we know that we are not in the fire alone. We have a very present help indeed. We have a very present help indeed. Um, okay. All right. Y'all, don't get me, don't get me started tonight. If this is your first time joining Remar, I'm sorry. It may not be what you were thinking, but this is who we are. Okay. We will we allow, we make room for the Holy Spirit here. And when he show up, he show up. Okay. And we might not even finish this class, but at the end of the day, God's will be done. So <clears throat> here's a question. All right. Question. We've been talking about Otitis Media. All right. And so here's our question. Number one, the nurse provides health teaching to expectant mothers about preventing Otitis Media. Okay. Which of the following statements concerning the cause of otitis media is true? Okay. Number one, otitis media. It is caused by exposure of ears to dry air. Two, is frequently caused by a bacterial or viral infection of the ear. Okay. Three, it is due to excessive earwax. Or four, it is a complication of cerumen impaction. Talking about, talking about some teaching, okay? Doing some teaching. Which of the following is the cause of otitis media? I see a lot of twos on the screen and the correct answer is, did you get it? It is number two. Yay. This is not Kahoot, but you did it. Okay. Um, frequently, number two, frequently caused by bacterial or viral infection. So bacteria and viruses can cause ear infections. If this is your first time joining us, ear infections are frequently the result of a cold or upper respiratory infection. So microorganisms enter your ear via the eustachian tube, and then the bacteria or virus, virus will cause that tube to swell. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Question number two. A four-year-old male client visits the clinic accompanied by his mother. According to the mother, her child has an earache, fever, and fluid flowing from his left ear. 
what causes children to be more prone to otitis media than adults? Number one, the children's eustachian tubes are not working like adults. They're trapped in fluid behind the eardrum. Two, the size of the ear canal is wider. Three, they produce more earwax compared to adults. Four, the effectivity of medications are lower among children. Hey, what is that? What is the correct answer here? Correct answer. Number one, no fooling you guys tonight. No fooling you guys. Children's eustachian tubes are not working like adults. They trap the fluid behind the ear. So in general, children are more likely than adults to suffer ear infections because a child's eustachian tubes don't function like adults, accumulating fluid behind the eardrum. Their immune system or body's defense against illness is still developing. They are more susceptible to infections transmitted by other kids. Okay, good job. And just a reminder, guys, on Winning Wednesdays, I don't challenge you to unlock the questions. I just give you the questions on Winning Wednesday. So however many I have is however many I have. So let's go to the next question. Is this. Question number three, the nurse assists the primary care physician in examining a four-year-old male client who visits the clinic because of fever and ear pain. The doctor advised the mother not to give the child aspirin for pain and fever. The nurse is aware that aspirin administered to children, the aspirin is administered to children with caution for this reason. Number one, two, okay. Number one, aspirin may decrease the effectivity of the vaccine to children. Two, it may lead to a condition called Rye's syndrome. Three, aspirin may interfere with a child's growth and development. Or four, aspirin may increase the risk of ADHD among children. Oh, I see a lot of people picking this. Oh man, but I got to do my writing again. So the correct answer is, what is the correct answer? Because we didn't go over this specifically, but I think we should, just in case anybody has not studied this before. So I'm just going to use this. So when we talk about this condition, Raya syndrome, oh, let me do it again. I didn't do that right. This is also in quick facts. OK, but some of you don't have quick facts right now. So I got to give you the quick facts of it. When we talk about Raya syndrome, it's usually because of aspirin that's given to what type of infections, viral or bacterial? Viral or bacterial infections. What do you guys say? Is in quick facts. Yeah. Viral infections. Okay. So Raya syndrome, typically given for, for viral infections. What, another point about Raya syndrome that I want you to consider, is Raya syndrome going to happen fast or slow? What do you guys think? And it's, this is very important because this is why NCLEX always, always includes this in pediatric teaching always oh i see some fast i see some slow what else uh, mm, why you guys were thinking about that uh, some people are saying fast some people are saying slow this is why you got to do content this is why you got to do content I answered this question today. <laughs> okay, so Raya syndrome is actually going to take place slowly, okay? Slowly. That's why we have to tell our parents this because you typically won't see Raya syndrome if your patient has um, a, a, a fast issue. Like, so if we see a child in the emergency room and they have otitis media, are we keeping them there for days? No, we're going to send them home. So it is very important 
that we teach the parents, hey, when otitis media clears up after three or four days, okay, if you have given the child aspirin for pain, you may see Raya syndrome. I like this. <laughs> Danielle, this comment takes me out. New knowledge unlocked, okay? Um, but yeah, so Raya syndrome is going to happen slowly. So it's up to the moms and the dads to know. Now I have a question here. Out of these two organs, what is going to be affected most with Raya syndrome? Is it the liver or the kidneys? What do you know? What do you know about it? It's in Quick Facts. A lot of your content is coming from Quick Facts. Oh, correct answer is oh, the liver, okay? The liver. And it's not even the kidneys. You're worried about the liver and the what? What's the other organ? The liver and the brain, okay? The liver and the brain. These are going to be the major organs that are affected with Raya syndrome. And so when your patient has this, when your patient has this, they're going to have encephalopathy. Remember, we talked about that. Um, they are be they're going to be begin to be confused. They're going to have issues with all type of hepatic conditions, right? It's going to, their liver is going to start failing. And it's all because they got aspirin with a viral infection. All right. So if you need to study this, we got over a thousand nursing students here between Facebook and uh, YouTube. That's amazing. On a random Wednesday night. What? Mm -hmm. And so again, and this is how, listen, we were studying otitis media. How did we get here? We got here is because NCLEX is a big picture test. It's a big picture test. So you always have to be able to make the connections, especially now that NextGen um, has case studies. All right. So um, when, when you talk about this, all right, when you talk about this, you're going to want to make sure that those are the two big ones. Those are the two major organs that you understand in the connection with Raya syndrome. All right. Now, let's get back into it. Let's get back into it. So question number four says this. The nurse, the nurse instructs the mother of a one-year-old child about correctly, all right, about a one-year-old child about correctly positioning the baby during bottle feeding. Now, which of the following instructions are correct? Select three that apply. Select three that apply. You hold the baby in an upright position during bottle feeding. Okay. Do not place a baby, do not place a bottle in the baby's mouth while lying down. Remember, you're going to select three. Number three says any position is safe for the baby when bottle feeding. Any position. Four, do not leave the bottle in the baby's crib after feeding. Four, place the baby flat on the back and support the head with a pillow. And support the head with a pillow. Ah, we're looking. These are my favorite type of questions. Select three that apply here. And it is all about positioning. It is all about positioning when feeding. What saith Remar nurses? Great, 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 great. I see a lot of the same answers and I love seeing that. That means we're on the same accord. So number one, number two, and number four, you got it. We want to hold the baby in the upright position during bottle feeding. Two, we are not placing, okay? We are not placing a bottle in the baby's mouth while they're lying down. We don't want to do that. And then number four, do not leave the bottle in the baby's crib after feeding. Why? Because then the baby can pick it up and then that liquid can go in their mouth while they're lying down, right? 
And then, so if that happens, the fluid can get into the eustachian tube. Good job. Final question right here. Here we go. The ENT, okay? The ENT specialist performs a pneumatic otoscope to examine the outer ear and eardrums. Which of the following findings indicate fluid in the middle ear, okay? So number one, bulging ear tube. Two, transparent appearance. Three, clear fluid drainage. Or four, contracted eardrum. Ah, what do you know about the content matter of this subject? What do you guys know about it? Most of you guys are picking number one. Is number one the right answer? You got it, a bulging ear tube, bulging ear tube. So the eardrum might show signs of fluid in the middle ear, a bulging distinctive color drainage, typically red or yellow and presenting a cloudy appearance. I am so, so happy that you guys have done so well today on this topic about, you've done so well on this topic of otitis media, otitis media. And these are the things, you know, this is a subject that is very straightforward. It's very straightforward in terms of what you need to know for the exam. Okay. So I have a thousand students on and I want to do questions and answers about how to prepare for NCLEX. And I want to tell all the thousand of you that actually you will be taking the next gen NCLEX. And with taking the next gen NCLEX, the passing rates are actually really good. Okay. The passing rates are actually very, very good. And so you have a great chance to pass the exam. However, you have to make sure that you are doing every everything. Okay. Okay. So when I asked the question about the Raya syndrome, let me get it out again. So what I asked you guys was this. Okay. I asked you, we had, we went to here and I said between the liver and the kidneys, which one is going to be more affected? Okay. And the answer to that was the liver. The two major organs that are going to be affected are the liver and the brain. Now, you guys know on NCLEX, you will have questions where multiple answers can be right. But when you have to prioritize, that is going to be a point where you're going to have to say, even though several of these answers are right, they're only asking me for two. At that time, I was only asking you for two. OK, so out of the liver and the kidneys, which one is going to be more affected? You guys know now it is the liver. OK, the brain was the first thing on the page. So the brain is top. OK, then it'll be the liver. Then it'll be the kidneys. All right. What else? You were a safe nurse. That's right. That's the whole point. OK, guys, I do want to talk about the V. I do want to talk about the V2 because a lot of you don't know either number one, how to buy it. Or number two, how to delay the start date. So if you want to get into the V2, then you need to get into it and then delay your start date. So let me show you how to do this, okay? Really quickly, I'm gonna open up a new tab, all right? I'm gonna open up a new tab. This is the content, this is the content. And you're gonna go to remarnurse.com because even if you don't have the V2, you still can do the trial, all right? And we literally have the Labor Day sale ending in two hours, not one, two hours, okay? And so I want you guys to take advantage of it. And even if you don't want to start tonight, you can still take advantage of the sale and delay your start date. So anyways, the first thing you're going to do is pick whether you're a registered nurse or a practical nurse. How many practical nurses have I in the house tonight, okay? Um, registered nurses here. So I'll just put registered nurses. I see I have a lot of registered nurses. When you click on registered nurse, you will see here, join NCLEX V2, okay? Join NCLEX V2. You can click on the join NCLEX V2. It's gonna take you down to the Labor Day sale. Now we have two time frames for accessing V2. You can do it for 30 days or 90 days. You know how long you wanna study for. 
some of you guys know you want to study for a longer time, or some of you know you're testing in the September, you want to get into your content. Okay. So if you want to do it for 30 days, the Labor Day sale is $69. Okay. $69. If you want to do it for 90, 90 days, it is $129 for 90 days. So these are the sale prices. Yes, it's still on sale. Now, if you go to the buy now, you're able to get right into it. If you want to do a free trial of the V2, you can do that here too. But I'm going to show you how to delay your start date. So when you click on buy now, when you click on buy now, it is going to take you to the checkout page. All right. Oh, you know what? I have to open up a brand new window. I'm sorry, because I'm already logged into the V2. So I apologize. Let me do it again really quickly. It just logged me right in. The V2 will keep track of you. And so let me, I'll just do it again. I'll just do it again really quickly. So the Labor Day sale is still on, guys. Registered nurse, if you scroll down, you can read about everything you're going to get in the V2. If you click on buy now, it will take you, it just refuses. It refuses. Let me log out of here because V2 is like you're, you're logged in. Why are you trying to buy it again? It won't let me do it. Let me try it again. That's okay. I'm going to open up a whole new incognito window and try it again. And I'm just trying to show you how to delay the start date because you can only delay the start date. Oh, some, did somebody take it over? Oh, okay. So anyways, there it is. Um, this is what it will look like when you are signing up for the V2. All right. Um, let me try it one more time and do it the proper way. Go to join V2 and let me click on it. No, it's just not letting me sign up for this course. It's just, it's saying you, you are already here. Let me, if I close, let me close every single window. Um, is the renewal? Yes, the renewal is definitely, the renewal is still on. You don't, if you don't cancel the V2, it will automatically renew itself. It will automatically renew itself. Let me just click cancel out of Chrome altogether. What else do you guys have to ask me? Somebody says, don't even worry about it. Everything is worth it. I will teach you how to maneuver the, the V2. Let me just get into it. Open up Chrome all over again. And let me go into a new window. I don't want to sign in. And let me try to do this again for you guys. I'm also taking questions. Thank you so much. I passed with only V2. That is phenomenal. All right. Let me go to remarnurse.com. I'm just clicking too much. My computer is like, hold up. You're, 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 you're going too fast. Let me see. Regina, I had 91 questions. Let me uh, let me take these questions here. Thank you so much, Regina. I passed not only with the V2 in book, but also with the TikTok videos. When you say random questions will not get you ready and won't determine your passing. Thank you. No, thank you so much for coming on here on the study calendar, what to read on the review. Okay, let me see if my computer, it's, it's, it's literally my computer. I'm in Ohio right now. And because of the storms and everything, we have just been having such a hard time living in the country. Okay. It's me. It's really me. But anyways, when you look at the order page on V2, what you're going to see is click here to delay your start date right under the total. So right now we have a one month in the V2 for $49. If you have quick facts, it'll be a $20 add-on and that's $69, okay? That is the Labor Day price. So check this out. If you already have the V2, you don't need, I'm sorry, if you already have the quick facts, you don't need it again. So you're literally getting one month for $49. What? This is the flash sale. It's ending in two hours. Somebody says, um, I'm going to buy, how many questions does the V2 have? The V2 has over 2000 questions, but remember the benefit of the V2 is not the questions. It is 
the content. So I want you to really focus on the content. That's what I want you to focus on. And so again, when I'm teaching you guys content, we're doing just what we did tonight. We're going to start with pregnancy and then we're going to finish with prioritization. Pregnancy to prioritization. So if you have this book, you have half of the program. Okay, you have half of the program. When you sign up for the V2, you're going to get the downloadable. Okay, you're going to get the downloadable. And then that's going to be your program. You're going to watch the video lectures. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mickey Jones says, excellent content, Remar tops other companies. Thank you so much. All right, yes, 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 yes. Let's talk about if you have questions about how the V2 works, this is the time to. This is a great question. I get this all the time about the CAT exams in the V2. So you can pass a CAT exam. So I just want to say congratulations for passing that CAT exam in 91 questions. That's really amazing. But you said, however, I had four below in the categories. How can I pass a CAT exam with four below? It is just like when you take your NCLEX exam. You can pass your NCLEX exam and have some categories in that moment that you're below in. Because remember, NCLEX is a probability exam, right? It's a statistical exam. It's not a percentage exam like we're used to. So when you have a probability exam, the test is trying to make the assumption that if you kept going, you would actually pass everything. And so that's what happens. Our CAT exam, once it determines 95% confidence in you, it doesn't matter what you're doing at that current moment. It knows that in the future, you will get all of those questions um, correct to pass the passing level. So it'll just shut off and it'll just say, and you passed, right? And then you get your printout and it's like, well, I was below in this time. But the idea, remember, is if you kept going, you would pass it. You would pass it. And so I want you to use the CAT exam to look at yourself and say, I'm doing really well. And then just look at the areas that you were below in. Go back into the question bank and get more practice. That's what CAT exams are for. So I hope that made sense to you. Okay. I hope that made sense to you. My exam is on the 16th of this month. I have quick facts. Okay, so you don't have the content videos. Let me ask you, how are you getting your content? Okay, how are you getting your content? Let me know. Because there's, there's some things that are missing from the Quick Facts book that I still want you to know. So please make sure that you are, um, you're studying your, your management of care concepts, you're studying prioritization, infection control, accident and error preventions. If you don't have that content down, uh, then I would say give yourself more time. You can always change your test date. Don't ever feel, you know, don't ever feel like, you know, you're just stuck with that test date the whole time. You're not. Okay. Thank you, Professor Regina and Mark. I passed my NCLEX with 87 questions. Emanuela, that's amazing. That is amazing. All right, I am here answering questions. Hey, the content helps a lot, guys. It definitely does. It definitely does, okay? Um, so if you have, if you just brought the V2, welcome to my class. I'm really excited that you brought it. I will say though this, if you're looking to download Quick Facts, you're not gonna be able to do that, okay? Quick Facts is going to be sent to you. So this book will be sent to you. You will download this book right here. Okay, you will download this book right here. Okay, what you have your, says I have my exam. These are some great questions. Congratulations, Manuela. Okay, all right. And I am really, really, I'm really, um, Looking forward to everybody getting their quick facts out, everybody, you know, making sure that you have everything that you need. So when you get into the quick facts, let me just go over how you're going to use it. All right. And I'll pull up my laptop. Look, my look, Team Remar made this sticker for me. And it's just is really cool. I like I love it. I have it on my, my computer. All right. I want to show you guys how you're going to use the program. 
So let me log in. Remartners.com. Okay. Sign into it. Bam, bam, bam. When you start this program, guys, you are going to, the first thing that you're going to do is go to the file vault. So this is the program. You're going to load it up. When you get into the V2, you will sign into the V2. Okay. You are going to have all of your lectures. These are the lectures that you will, you know, you'll eventually watch while you are filling out your workbook. Okay. This is the workbook. Okay. So you're going to watch a video. You're going to fill it out. But the first thing that you need to do is come over here, the third file. This is your file vault. In your file vault, you will get your daily study calendar. So if you just click on file vault, okay? And you go to, oh, you know what? This is, hold on a second. This is my, this is the trial. This is actually the trial account. So when you go to the trial account, you will have all of these things. You'll be able to do this first section as part of the trial. Okay. And if you guys don't have the trial in my program, you go to remardnurse.com, you will be able to um, get into the trial account. But let me go into the let me go into the full account. And I'll just log in. We have a couple different um, I have a couple different usernames. So let me do that. I'm actually going to log into Mark's account. Let me see if he's been doing the the work he's supposed to be doing. Okay. And log in here. Okay. So this is the full program. When you go to the file vault here, it is going to say course resources. Ah, let me scoot over. Course resources. When you click on course resources, okay, it's going to take you to the to the registered nurse, and you will be able to get your daily study calendar. Is this one right here, okay? Daily study calendar. And it's going to open up and you'll be able to download it. Okay, so you download that calendar. And I'm just showing you this because your daily study calendar is going to be where you're going to know what to do every single day, okay? So this is where you get your daily study calendar from. And you can print this out It'll go right to your computer. You can save it. This is the this is the V2, okay? Your daily study calendar. Now, let me close this out and go back into it. So once you have that study calendar, it will tell you what to do. You are going to go back into the V2. You're going to have your workbook, okay? You're going to pick one of the videos. Well, not one of the videos because you do need to go in order. That's one thing. This is about accountability. Does the trial have content as well as the daily calendar? So the trial doesn't have a daily calendar. The trial will give you access to watch the pregnancy video. Um, I believe it's just this row here, okay? But the whole idea of the trial is that you get a feel for the system and you get a feel for how I teach. And you will see my videos are not long, 14 minutes. Pregnancy is 40 minutes, but that's because I do all of pregnancy. So this one is 14 minutes, infant heart defects is 10 minutes, developmental milestones, 21 minutes. You guys can do this, all right? So this is um, this is the lecture part, the most important part. And there's not that many videos, okay? Honestly, there's not that many. And again, you're gonna be watching these videos, okay? So if we play IV fluids, There are three types. You would be watching this video. Now, Let me mute it. Is my pro tip. And when you're watching this video, and there's not PowerPoint slides, it's literally lectures, you're going to be filling out the book. All right. I'll show you how to get the workbook too. But you will go to um, IV Fluids and you're going to just fill out everything that I'm saying in the video, just like you're taking a regular class. So that's how these two work. This is the physical book, but if you want the downloadable book, it's in the same place you get your, your study calendar. It's right there, okay? It was really, okay, interesting. Yes, exactly. So again, this is content. This is much different from just doing questions. 
So if you find yourself just doing questions, I guarantee you this will be something that you will, it will be, ha it will happy to have. Okay. It's called, it is, it is, this is a study session. So you need to be able to have information to study. I like this. What other questions do you have? Exactly, ML. You definitely need the V2 content. Follow the study guide and calendar and you guys will be fine. I promise y'all. Okay. <laughs> nice. All right. I study with my niece on my chest. She's two months. The content is quick and easy. Exactly. This is the, um, this is the program for busy students. This is the program for busy students. I make sure that my lectures are short and to the point. Okay, short and to the point. Um, I do wanna talk about the question bank because you have your courses and then this little house here is the question bank portion of the V2. It's all in one. So you don't ever have to, you know, go somewhere else or buy somewhere else. Let me go to the question bank. So when you click on the question bank, it is going to load and it will tell you how many questions, how many questions you've done, how many you have, how many you've done, and how many are remaining. And then you'll get a, a feel for your score too. So somebody asked, there's 2,386 questions in the V2. Okay. Oh, Young and fly. I just had a baby in May, a rare cancer, work a lot. I've been out of school for over a year. I'm determined to pass. I have V2 and I'm confident I will be a Remar nurse by October this year. I love everything about that. I love how hard you're working for that baby. So I, any way I can help you, um, if you're in V2, I hope you're enjoying it and you're getting through it. But please just send me a message if there is anything else that you need, okay? So, um, when, you, when you're in the V2 question bank, I just want to show you how you create a test. You click on the button, create a test. It will load up. And then this is, this is where you're choosing the type of test you want it. If you want a computer adaptive test, you find it in the question bank. Okay. So it is tutor, test, or computer adaptive right here. It's all in one place. Does somebody need to finish the entire question bank? No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't need to finish the entire question bank at all. For me, the priority is the content, okay? Um, and I just want to go to, I just went to my test history, honestly, but you guys can take a, you can create your own tests and it's just like a regular question bank. It, it allows you to create your own tests. You're going to be able to, do the case studies. It has partial credit, all of the next gen stuff that you guys like. So I don't know if I talk about the question bank as much as I talk about the content, but for those of you who are looking for it, it's here. Okay. The bow tie questions, all of that. How do you get to the question bank? Yeah, sure. Again. So again, you just go to this icon, the second one. Second one is question bank. Third one is your file vault. Fourth one is your notes. Fifth one is your settings. So your profile, if you want to cancel your subscription, if you want to change your name, you do it there. Um, Nurse Regina. Yes, I definitely. <laughs> Somebody said the question banks are good. Yeah. So, I mean, this is what you, this is what you need in order to be prepared for NCLEX. You need the content plus you need the lectures. So if you're not studying with that, please, just get in the trial version of this program, but you're going to see the difference. Remarnurse.com to do that. Remarnurse.com to do that. So can I start practice? Can you buy it now and delay the start date? Yes, you can do that. You can do that. You can buy it now. You can delay your start date. Also, one thing I want to say is that you do have to go in order. Like I said, one of the main benefits of the V2 is that the way I'm teaching you is to teach you in the shortest amount of time. And so with V2, you do have to go in order. Like you can't come in and go straight to, you know, body positions or diabetes insipidus. And the reason why is because in every lesson, I'm trying to build a foundation. Okay. I'm trying to build a foundation. So you do go in order. There are practice exams that you take and you have to finish those practice exams or complete those practice exams. 
Okay. And yes, when you are doing, okay, when you're doing V2, you should have the workbook and the quick facts book. You should have both books. Okay. Is the same place to get the study calendar. Yes, it is. So let me show you how to get the workbook really quickly. I'm sorry if I hit my microphone. If you go again to your file vault, this your file vault, this is your third icon. Third icon, file vault. You go to course resources. Okay, this is the V2 platform. And then you have study calendar here. The next thing is your student workbook. Okay, the thing after that is new NCLEX resources. So any of the new updates that I put, any new documents, please check it out. Please check out that file of new NCLEX resources. Okay, because I have some things in there for you guys. but let me go back because we were talking about the student workbook. The student workbook is also here and you can just download it and it will show up on your computer. Let me make sure I hit download. And let me make sure it opens it up. Oh, it blocked. You got to turn off. If you have a blocker on, if you have a blocker on, it might stop it from the automatic download. I see it. Let me allow it to download it. Okay, there we go. So this, the NCLEX workbook, it will come up on your laptop. But just again, I'm in, um, I'm in a Chrome browser. So if you have any blockers on there, it may show up. All right. Okay. All right. So if you need to have been motivated, if you feel like you don't have a, you know, a way out, I'm telling you, this is, this is going to be a great program for you. And again, if you need questions about your specific account or you have any more just little things you want to ask me, please email me support at remarreview.com, support at remarreview.com. And I will be happy to help you. I will be happy to help you. But um, for tonight, I hope you enjoyed our class. I hope you um, learned a little bit about Otitis Media and I will be back, okay? I will be back. Support at remarreview.com and we will be doing uh, some customer service for you guys on even tonight. I'm gonna hop off here and I wanna just say thank you so much for joining the class. And again, as always, you can, you will, and you must pass in class.